Parkside Comprehensive is in the dormitory village of Cullingworth on the outskirts of Bradford in Yorkshire. The school's in a semi-rural setting. Its last Ofsted report described it as good, with some outstanding features. Dan? Simeon? Claire Hewitt is a newly qualified foreign languages teacher. This programme follows Claire as she gets to grips with classroom management. That means everybody stop and look this way, please. Claire's no stranger to the occasional bit of challenging behaviour. She used to work for an airline. I've dealt with lots of difficult situations. Obviously, working as cabin crew for an airline, you're in an extremely difficult situation because you're 30,000 feet up in the air, You've got nowhere to go. If anyone starts causing you problems, you've got to deal with it. It's like being in a classroom. But, um, you've got to deal with the situation yourself. Um, you can't really get someone to help you when you're in the air. So I'm hoping to be able to deal with a lot of the difficult situations myself. Hopefully. <laughs> It's now five weeks into term. We stop talking. Do not come to my lesson half dressed late. Claire has set working with low ability groups as one of her targets for the year. She teaches six lessons a week to low ability classes in years seven and eight. One of the biggest challenges in the classroom, I think, is differentiation. It's one of the buzzwords that's going around schools at the moment because you've got so many levels to try and teach on. You've got a range of abilities in a classroom and you've got to try and cater to everybody that's in there. Bethan, stop talking. I'm the teacher. What? Yes, if you want to talk, you ask me. Don't just talk in the middle of my lesson. Vous allez apprendre. Come on. Vous arrivez au collège. I know they're learning something because they come back the next lesson and they'll know it. So I think you've just got to get used to their learning style is they have to swing on the chairs, they have to collapse on the desks, they have to be noisy. I think you've got to learn to put up with their particular learning style, which is that. En autobus, c'est excellent, très bien. Next one, Jade. I can't say it. She's trying. Watch you. Watch you. Watch you. Watch you. I have got two low ability classes. Okay. Very low ability. Mm. I didn't realise how weak they would be. Claire meets her mentor, Sarah Williams, to discuss strategies for improving her classroom management. And what does that have? How does that affect your planning then? Um, I've got to really break everything down into really little pieces. I mean, I'm doing one, one spectrum is like the year 10 where they can do full sentences and these are just picking up words. So I just find it really strange. One of the hardest things is to keep them occupied for an hour. You've said that you've got to make it bite size. Yeah. The activities, can you just explain a little bit more what, you, you, what you've understood by that? Or how well, I have to do little activities, different activities on one on one theme. So I just change activities every five, ten minutes to make sure they, they can so keep that, up. That keeps their attention. So they're not always looking down. Sometimes I'm using flashcards, sometimes I use the board. I have to keep them. So varieties yeah. keep. When you've done it, I want you to write how you travel. By the time it gets to um, week five, six and seven of your term, then people are starting to become weary. There are staff off timetable and so you might have to go and cover lessons and your timetable is becoming more and more complicated. So Claire's doing exceptionally well. She's still bubbly, she's still organised, uh, she's still asking questions all the time, but clearly she's tired. I had two problems. I had to break up two fights. One of them was um, by pushing a girl down the hill. I uh, told him to stop and he told me in no uncertain terms to F off, which I thought was very nice of him. It really did upset me. I've never, I don't know, I couldn't get over it. I've never sort of had anyone 
like that speak to me like that. I don't think even any other adults have ever spoken to me like that. I just think it's downright rude. I think the term good classroom management means the majority of your students for the majority of the time are on task and are learning and do move from A to B in your lesson and you need to have as a teacher the right strategies in place in order that 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 might ha that that definitely will happen not might but will definitely happen for the lesson I get the classes to line up outside Lots of teachers do this. I think it's the policy at this school to do that. Um, I was told about it at this school. I was told about it at my previous school where I did my placement before and I saw teachers using it effectively there. Um, I think it just makes the pupils respect your classroom more because they know that it's your classroom and they're not allowed to just go in there and do what they want. They have to go in in a controlled manner and that sets the tone of the lesson, if you like, before they even get in the classroom. They all know when they come into the classroom that they should sit down, they should get the books out and the planners out and be ready to work as soon as they get in there. Jade, why have you got your bag with you? Your coat. You don't bring coats into my classroom. Go back, please. I do check the uniforms. It's a big problem <laughs> with some of them in the school. Um, they like to walk around with the shirts out and things. But there is a uniform dress code and they know what it is and they do try it on sometimes. So when they come in my classroom, I make sure they're properly dressed and they know what I expect of them. I expect them to be properly dressed, properly equipped and ready to start learning. Talk your shirt in. I wanted to establish firm rules when I had my own classes to look after so that they knew exactly what to expect and exactly what I wouldn't put up with and they know how far they can take you, basically. Michael, get on with your work! I've done what it. is oh. your oh. glove? The glove. Right, have you done this? No. Yeah, but I, did, I thought they were still there. Like this. this class will stay in for ten minutes yeah. unless the person who is whistling stops. Excuse me! The whole class wants to stay in then, do they? No! She's firm with the students and what she's doing is she's saying all the time I'm in control um, what I want to happen will happen, you mustn't challenge me and you must know that if you step outside of the parameters I've set you then there will be a consequence. I start a countdown so they know that by the time I get to stop, that is it. So they've got five seconds to stop talking and listen and they know that they've got to concentrate. After that, I've got a clock on my board which is there permanently not just for learning telling the time but because I add minutes onto it so every minute of mine that they waste I will take a minute off them off their break or their dinner whatever so that seems to be working at the moment <laughs> It's working really well, apart from I think that now I've got to be more specific on who is staying back. Stand up in silence, put your chairs under, don't go anywhere. 
because I kept the whole class in at first, which obviously they all hated, but they knew that then that I wouldn't let them get away with stuff. So I wanted the whole class to see that I wouldn't let them get away with it. And then now I'm introducing it so that I'm just picking on those specific students that are causing the problem. It's Wednesday. <laughs> I don't remember what day of the week it is. It's Wednesday, I think. I'm in week six, I think. I can't remember. Anyway, I know that the week after next it's half term, so <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about at the moment. I'm, um, I'm just finishing off for tonight. It's ten to nine and I'm absolutely shattered. I don't think I can do any more. My brain's aching. I'm going to explain something that I'm going to start this year with you. These are little Eiffel Towers, Le Tour Eiffel. You're going to stick this in the back of your cahier on the blue bit, okay? When you give me a good answer, you do a good piece of work, you're going to get un point. If I shout out to you un point, turn to the back of your book and you colour in one of the squares. Though some of them have a bit of trouble remembering what they're supposed to do when they get in there. So if I see one table or one student that's done exactly what I've asked, I'll say un point, I give points out to them. And so everyone else will think, oh, I'm going to get a point for getting my stuff out. So little rewards so they can see what good behaviour is and what I expect of them. And then they're all like competing to get points to fill up their Eiffel Towers. <laughs> they find it really encouraging when they see the work on the walls. And today they were saying, oh, where are you going to put, where are you going to put this? Where are you going to put that that I've done? And I've had to tell them exactly where I'm putting it in my room because when, when it goes up and they see it, you know that they feel pleased. They don't always say, oh, I really like what you've done with your room, miss. But um, <laughs> you know that they're really chuffed to see their bit of work on the wall. Bonjour. It's six weeks into term and Claire's pleased with the way her classes are responding to her teaching style. I think that my first term's gone quite well. It's been quite stressful and rushed and busy but I think everyone feels the same, I think everyone experiences that. You've got to be really really well organised, you've got all your marking to do, you've got all your data to keep up with all your records, all your marking records, things like that. You've got your classroom management to sort out, you've got everything, your planning, your resources, um, there's just so much to do outside of actually teaching. I think fundamental to good classroom management is good planning. I think that's the nucleus. I think you need to know where you're going and what you want to achieve in your lesson and you need um, to share that with your students. And I think you need to be able to also be flexible and be aware that you will definitely encounter problems. I'm looking forward immensely to my half term. I think I've worked extremely hard on the lead up to it, so um, I think we all deserve it now, we're all waiting for it.